Well, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, the paper I'm about to present is called Motherhood and Flexible Jobs, Evidence from Latin American Countries. This is joint work with a lot of colleagues from Argentina. Uh, Inés Berniela, Mariana Marchioni from CEDLAS, Universidad de La Plata, and Lucila Berniela and Dolores de la Mata from CAF. And I am Maria from Universidad de San Andrés in Buenos Aires. Um, let me give you some motivation. I think nobody needs motivation in this room, but just in case, um, we're all very well aware of the great convergence in terms of gender roles um, for men and women during the last century. Yet, we also know that very uh, large gender gaps exist, especially in the labor market. And we know that these gaps are particularly large in Latin America. And the literature recently has identified motherhood as a key a factor here. And basically motherhood is um, identified as the last hurdle to be uh, overcome if we are to um, finally achieve gender equality. And so basically um, there has been a lot of papers that have been able to identify the causal effect of the arrival of the first child. And there are a lot of nice papers, but basically these papers are focused on developed countries. So we get a lot of information about the effect in labor market outcomes for developed countries. And uh, on the contrary, for Latin American countries or for develop, developing countries in general, we have very little information. And the question is, does it matter? Should we care that um, we just have information for developed countries? And we think this is uh, important. We think that extrapolating these results from developed countries to developing regions might be misleading. Why? Because, as we discussed today, we have very different um, cultural and institutional backgrounds. And so uh, it is important that we provide uh, specific evidence for developing countries. OK, so this is what we try to do in this paper. We try to do three different things. Uh, first, we provide evidence of the uh, causal effect of the arrival of the first child with comparable data for four countries in the region. These countries are Chile, Mexico, Peru, and Uruguay. And we assess this effect uh, on a variety of labor market outcomes. We assess this effect on employment, also on um, changes in the occupational structure, so uh, part-time employment, self-employment, and informality, um, informal jobs. And lastly, we uh, try to provide some su suggestive, descriptive evidence on the role that social norms and family policies may have in this motherhood effects that we are estimating. So let me give you a glimpse of the methodology and data we are basing our analysis on. We are using an event study approach around the birth of the first child. This is the standard methodology that's been used in these developed countries I mentioned before, um, basically led by the first paper uh, on about, um, sorry, by Cleven and co-authors. And this event study approach requires panel data. We need to follow men and women across time. We need to follow their labor market trajectories. And we need to know the exact date of the birth of the first child. So we need all of this information to be able to estimate the causal effect of the arrival of the first child. And um, it's important to know that we need uh, people to become parents at some point. So our sample is composed of, of men and women that become, spare, become parents at some point. And another thing is, that's important to bear in mind is that we are only capturing post-birth effect, uh, post -birth effects. Um, what this means is that maybe there may be some anticipation effects. Women may be making different choices, anticipating the fact that at some point they will become mothers. We are not going to be able to capture these effects with this methodology. And of course, we have this to rely on an identification assumption. And this identification assumption is that the timing of the event is not correlated with the labor outcome we are looking at, conditional on having a child in a sample period, and on, all, on the included controls. OK, so this is the equation we are estimating. Let me walk you through a little bit. On the left-hand side, we have our outcomes of interest. So y is our outcome of interest for individual i in time t. Y are going to be four different labor market outcomes. It's going to be employment, self-employment, part-time employment, and informality. And then on the right-hand side, 
The first term is the most important. Here we have a set of dummy variables that what uh, they're doing is that they're indicating um, the relative um, distance to the birth of the first child. So basically, this beta tau that's there, this parameter here is our parameter of interest, and this tau, this subindex uh, tau, is measuring the time relative to birth. So whenever tau is zero, we are identifying the time of the birth of the first child. Whenever tau is positive, we are identifying periods after the birth of the first child. And whenever tau is negative, we are capturing pre-trends. And we are including a set of controls, age and calendar months, and year fixed effects. Data sources. Um, as I said before, we require panel data, very intensive panel data. And this is very uh, an important limitation to try to explore this issue in Latin America, because there are very few surveys that account for this. So we are able to do this for these four countries I mentioned, Chile, Mexico, Peru, and Uruguay. These are the sources we use. And uh, all of these surveys are nationally representative, and they have the information we need. That is, the exact date of the birth of the first child and the labor trajectories of men and women before and after the child is born. And these are the results we get. Um, I am going to present all results in the forms of graphs, which is typically done in this literature. So let me walk you through the first graph. Let's concentrate in in Chile here, so that you get an idea of what we're looking at, and then I will repeat this for the other results. Uh, so we are focusing on employment. This is the first labor market outcome we are looking at. And basically what you have on the x-axis here, you have tau. So you can see very well, but here tau is equal to zero. So basically here we're looking at the birth of the first child. Everything that is to the right of uh, tau equal to zero are all periods after the birth of the first child, and whatever is to the left of tau equal to zero is a pre-trend. And what we have on the y-axis here, we have, we're plotting the betas, right? So each of these dots here, in green we are plotting betas for women, and in orange we have men. So basically what these betas are capturing is the difference in the outcome of interest, in this case employment, and sorry, I forgot to say that we are uh, using as an omitted category um, tau equal to minus 12. So we are looking at one year before the child is born. We are comparing the outcome of interest in each period to what happened one year before the child is born. So basically, we are measuring here the change in employment relative to the employment one year before the child is born. And so what we see for Chile, and then this is repeated for all countries, is that as a child is born, we find a very large drop in employment rates for women. Nothing much seems to be happening to the fathers. And the same is repeated for Mexico, for Peru, and for Uruguay. I didn't mention also that here for Peru and Uruguay, we have yearly data. Instead, for Chile and Mexico, we have monthly data. That is why you're looking at graphs that look a little bit different. But basically, in all cases, we see this sharp drop. For women, nothing much seems to be happening to fathers. And uh, we see that this persists over time. On average, the magnitude of the effect is very similar across countries, between 17 and 20%. Yes? These are the betas. The change, the difference between the period, like tau equal to like two years after the birth of the first child, compared as the employment one year before. Sorry, and we are co yes, we are including age as a control. Mm -hmm. Yes, in Mexico, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. In the in the pre-trend, mm -hmm. like here in the pre-trend, right? Or after after the child is born? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's before. Do you mean this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we're focusing on this large drop that's happening here, like after the birth. What I meant is after the birth, but actually in Mexico we are seeing something. But we are concentrating. Sorry. Okay. No, 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 that's okay. Yes. Okay, so this is employment. 
Then we go to part-time employment and we find a similar pattern. You won't find Mexico here because Mexico does not provide hours of work. So for Mexico, we cannot try this analysis. And we see here that um, part-time employment is increasing for women, but it's decreasing actually for men. Um, and this is significant for Chile and for Peru. We don't find significant results for Uruguay. Then we have self-employment. And here again, women seem to be taking up uh, self-employment uh, in Chile and in Mexico. For Peru and for Uruguay, we do not have the, the results are not significant. But in the case of Chile and Mexico, they're taking up, they seem to be taking up um, self-employment after the child is born, the first child is born. And then we have labor informality, uh, which is an aspect that maybe it's not so much considering the uh, developed countries' literature. And basically we find here that um, labor informality for women is also increasing after the birth of the first child. And um, this is significant for all countries. For Chile and Peru, the effect is around 16, 17%. And for Mexico and Uruguay, the effect is of the order of magnitude of 50%. It's very large. So um, basically what I've shown you is that we find a significant uh, impact of motherhood on labor market outcomes of women. Um, many women drop out of the labor force when the first child is born. And uh, for those that remain in the labor market, many change their occupational structure towards self-employment, part-time employment, and, and informal jobs. This comes at a very high cost for women, for women of course. They are uh, giving up economic independence, they're giving up social security, they're giving up future career prospects. And of course, these choices have also a positive side, right? They're, they're offering flexibility to women. and so. And the question is, why are women willing to, to trade these present and future benefits uh, for term flexibility? And so what we do in the last part of the paper is to try to explore, to provide very suggestive, descriptive evidence of uh, the drivers, the possible drivers behind these choices, or at least two possible drivers. that are gender norms and family policies. And of course, we know that um, this is very difficult to do. We have a lot of endogeneity issues here, and so it's very, they are very difficult to overcome. And even uh, further on, we have uh, very strict data restrictions for the Latin American region. And so we decide to go on a descriptive route, and that's okay, but even if we stick to a descriptive analysis, we find further challenges, because ideally what we would like to have is to have the, these causal effects for all Latin American countries and make some correlations with gender norms and family policies for the whole set of Latin American countries. But of course, as I told you, we are only able to produce these causal effects for four countries in the region. And we think that it's, it would be a little bit misleading to base our analysis, our correlational analysis, only on four countries. So what we do for this, uh, the exercise we do is to um, rely on a an approximation of this causal motherhood effect. And we are not looking at here at causal effects, but rather we are computing the gaps between mothers and non-mothers in labor market outcomes. So the difference between uh, mothers and non-mothers in uh, employment, in self-employment, part-time employment, and so on and so forth. And we use this as an approximation of the motherhood effect. We call this the motherhood gap to make a difference. And we correlate these gaps with the prevailing gender norms and family policies in the region. Um, we take the data from CEDLAC, uh, the database from CEDLAS. And so what we do here is this is just a set of, as I said, very suggestive and descriptive evidence. We have make no claims of causality here. We're just connecting this to different issues, and uh, again, I'm going to present this in the form of graphs, so let me walk you through them, so you get an idea of what you're looking at. We are uh, here, we are relating gender norms to this motherhood gap, remember, the difference between mothers and non-mothers, and basically what we are looking at is at one gender norm, which we elicited from the Latino Barometro, and the gender norms is the level of disagreement with the statement, women should work only if the partner does not earn enough. So uh, what you see here is basically that in all countries, uh, sorry, uh, for all results, we find that uh, the more conservative views the country held, the um, larger the gap between mothers and non-mothers is. So the more conservative a country, um, mothers are making choices that are really different from non-mothers. And the less conservative, they um, make similar choices. 
Then we do the same for childcare availability. And here we um, plot this uh, motherhood gaps for the four outcomes of interest to preschool enrollment rates for younger children, children three to five years old. And once again, what we see is that it comes as no surprise, of course, that when enrollment rates <laughs> grow up, we just saw it with, with Veronica, um, basically mothers tend to make much more similar choices than non-mothers in terms of labor market decisions. And finally, we um, do the same kind of analysis for uh, maternity leave. Basically, we are correlating here the number of weeks of protected maternal leave with this motherhood gap. And once again, we find that the more generous a country is in terms of this maternal leave, uh, the way uh, women with children and without children make decisions in the labor market regards to this, regarding these four labor market outcomes is more similar. So just to sum up, if you got lost a little bit in the, in the presentation, basically what we try to do here is to, cal to estimate the causal effects of motherhood on four countries in the region. And uh, we find significant reduction in employment and a significant change in the occupational structure. This is persistent over time. Women uh, seem to be um, moving on to less quality um, jobs. And basically, we try to answer the question of why they're doing this. And we just provide some suggestive and descriptive evidence regarding gender norms and family policies that may be, to some extent, shaping the decisions of women. And let me conclude by saying uh, we're pretty sure that there's a lot of room for designing better policies. We know that these policies are really tricky to design, but of course we need to design better and more policies for alleviating time constraints for family if we want to achieve gender equality in the region. Thank you very much.